We are back on the Daily Gur, and we have on the line with us Dermot Ryan, the brother of Alan Ryan. How are you doing today? Hello, Julian. A very good morning to you and your listeners there. Good, good, good. So we're just going to chat with you a little bit about your brother and his legacy, and I'm just bringing up the questions right now. Tell us a little bit about Alan Ryan growing up. Um, Alan was born on June the 3rd, 1980, in the Kilm Hospital, Hospital in Dublin. His home was Grange Abbey Drive in Donald His skills were on the Donald Community School. <clears throat> His hobbies were boxing. We boxed for Baldur Boxing Club as a youth. His achievements were Dublin League titles and Dublin Championships titles, and won many, tourna won many tournaments. Um, he went to watch his beloved Dublin GA team with my now deceased father. Um, during the summer holidays off school, he would go out cutting the lawn in the neighbourhoods, <coughs> and in pocket money. Um, as a youth, he joined the Fina Ireland at the early age of 14. He attended um, events and commemorations such as T-Bound, World Town, Liam Mellows, the Bally Seedy commemoration in Kerry. Um, they were involved in the Civil War when men were, were strapped to landmines by the Free State 26 County troops. Some were previously IRA volunteers. He also attended the commemorations of Charlie Cairns, hung by the Free State in the 1940s. He was a former IRA chief of staff. Also, the Eden Club of Martyrs, Sean South. Dohey O'Connell, like all martyrs, he attended that, that commemoration in 2012 and also the 1916 commemorations throughout the country on the hunger strike on marches and also volunteer Dominic McGlinchey. So tell us why he joined the Republican movement. You already mentioned that he joined the movement at 13. Well, Alan joined the movement. Alan would have been he would have taken interest in the Republic movement at a very early age of his life. My father would have been a Republican sympathizer. His generation would have would have seen the murder and slaughter of fourteen unarmed in, innocent civilians in Derry. Murdered by the British Parish Regiment, who marched for civil rights and equal rights. He would have seen on the news nationalists and Catholics being bored out of their homes by loyalist sectarian mobs and witnessed the British Embassy being torched on the streets of Dublin by ordinary people who were angered by the human treatment of Republicans and nationalists by the hands of the British establishment and also the bombings of Dublin and Monaghan in the 1970s where innocent civilians were murdered by loyalist paramilitaries colluding with the British Crown Forces and of course, the 1980-81 hunger strikes where 10 young men were allowed to die. You also had internment. My father always found it important that the youth needed to be educated and know their Irish history and not turn a blind eye to the atrocities being pissed out by the British. This is where Alan would have taken time and listened. There would have been a copy of On Public and Social Republican News in our home. Then Alan would make himself politically aware of the injustices being inflicted by the hands of the British in Ireland. Alan would have been in his very early teens when he became a Republican activist. And he, he, he was inspired by the likes of Dollar Price, Dollar Price who was force fed in the 1970s, and also inspired by the vision of Rory O'Brien. So he was in Port Leash when he was very young. Tell us about his arrest, why he was in Port Leash, and what experience, what his experience was in Port Leash. Um, Alan was jailed in, on October 24th, 1999, at the age of 19. He was trialed in the non jury Special Criminal Court in Green Street. On the night of the 20th, 20th of October 1999, 
the eve before Alan was due to be sentenced. At the Free State Non Jury Court for a Republican activity and possession of a revolver, Alan was attending an IRA training camp with his comrades at Stamullen, Brownstown County Gate, where he and his comrades would be later arrested on that night. Alan's dedication to the IRA never went unnoticed. Tell us about his views on the drug problems as well as other activism he was involved in. Alan's, Alan's views on the drug problem was Alan had great sympathy for drug addicts and victims of drugs. But Alan despised drug cultures and traffickers who poisoned their children and streets with their drugs. He also despised right wing parties who reaped misery in working class communities. Why was he targeted by the drug gangs and where was the police when he died? Alan was targeted with the drug gangs because the media betrayed Alan as a dangerous as a dangerous thug and a gangland figure. Now the reason the media wrote about Alan like that is because the state have an anti Republican policy. We also had Raul Gard working with criminals. Many were suspended and expelled for supplying drugs, gangs with people's personal information from the Gard Appalled system. You touched a little bit on the role the media played on his death, but how did they do this by fueling feuds after um, his death? Getting back to the media there, um, because they have a, they ha the state have an array of is Republicans are criminals, just like in the 20s and 40s, you wear a commie or a red. And also, the masses torn out locally at Allen's funeral. Republicans made national waves toward the funeral, and he was given four military honors in the public view. And the area was saturated with armed guardie and armed special units who were powerless to act with massive crowds attending Alan's funeral. But the Minister of Justice back then, Alan Shatter, the Minister <coughs> was now forced to resign in shame due to his corrupt actions. Um, he was enraged after the funeral of an IRA volunteer and the IRA took over the streets of Dublin to, to salute our fallen comrade. <coughs> In your mind, is his in your mind is his death a case of collusion between the Guardia and dealers? And why? Well, those are questions that will arise. Like when Alan was shot dead and he lay there on the ground, it took at least seven seven to eight minutes for Garda to arrive on the scene. Now on the day of his murder, the special branch were driving up and down the road. And the, the area was saturated with, with Gardaí. And after Ireland's border, there was no helicopter scrambled up the area, which is common sense. In your mind, what lessons can we as socialists learn from the life of Alan Ryan? Um, what I believe we can learn is we should live on the legacy Alan left behind. Alan, Alan inspired young people about the, the, the awareness and dangers of drugs. He, um, he was also a proud IRA volunteer that stood up to occupation in his land. Why is the media so dedicated to blackening Alan Ryan's name? Because Alan, Alan built a, a very big support base, a support base in Dublin, and the state do not want to see a Republican support base in Dublin. And um, it was it was these it was Alan's actions that affected the state. If you don't mind, I'm just going to ask you a few more questions, just because you're very honest and straight to the point. We still have ten more minutes on the show. So, uh, as the brother of Alan Ryan, do you feel that there was any sort of justice after his death, or do you feel that the Guardia 
did their job, or do you think that his uh, membership in the IRA played a role in the Guardian not doing their job and sort of sweeping his death under the rug? Well, I believe the the Guardian were more interested in um, the shot stopper fired over Alan's coffin than the shot stopper pumped into Alan. So that, that speaks for itself there. Going back to the shots fired over Alan Ryan's coffin, if one looks at the funeral, I've seen it on YouTube and uh, the media UTV has said that it was one of the hugest commemorations of an IRA volunteer since the so-called end of the Troubles. If he was such a bad person as the media says. Why did all the community come out? Because Alan was well respected by all circles of the community. He wouldn't be intimidated or bullied by them. He also helped. He helped the youth to come off drugs. He made them aware of the antisocial behavior elements in the area. Tell us some personal stories, if you feel comfortable, about Alan and Alan growing up and Alan's work in the community. Well, I'd like to say we as a family, that we as a family, we're not anti-English or sectarian, we are ordinary people. The ordinary English people are lovely. It is their establishment that has created bloodshed and the loss of life in Ireland and their world policy is to avoid and conquer, to cross in fighting and, to, and then criminalize. Just look back in history and you will find the facts. They tried to criminalize Wolftown, the father of Irish Republicanism, by sentencing to hang him. History is known to repeat itself, creating to the Alan Owens of today. For people today who are Republicans, what is the legacy of Alan Ryan? The legacy Alan left boy was was excellent. Like he inspired the young Republicans. Um, he, he, hello. 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 Hello? To enter a new destination number, press 1. To redial the last number, dot. Okay, that was Dermot, and we are having some phone difficulties. So we will end this portion of the Daily Gur, and uh, we will now go to a song. Uh, the Daily Gur is supported by the Community Radio Funds of Canada and CKMS. Uh, this was a daily GER for July 23rd, 2014. We would like, we are on weekdays from 9 to 10 a.m. on 100.3 FM CKMS in Waterloo Region and HTTP soundfm.ca on the web. Check out all our past shows and other Grand River Media Collective work on our website HTTP GrandRiverMC.ca. Stay tuned for more Grand River Radical Radio after we close the podcast with a song. And uh, thank you very much for li- thank you very much for listening.